Are you more relaxed now? I don't know if I need water, but I'll, I'll do this. Do you want whiskey? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Time is money, friend. Well, I can tell you now that uh, there was a pastor who had a feature or a segment and uh, Tulana Muletani's uh, radio show uh, on LCD FM. And this pastor will come on Sundays and always say that uh, simply means that uh, nobody's going to run after you. Uh, at work, you are supposed to do what you are supposed to do. You are supposed to do what you were taught. But we see a lot of presenters and uh, some of the radio personalities that are behind the scenes getting too comfortable and which is why we have a snoop check to tackle all of that and today i have a, a mr Lugu, andre Lugu from ikes uh, cultural consulting he also worked at sambo uh, but i saw his portfolio it's quite huge so i'm gonna ask him to introduce himself uh, for us Iso, and then after that we go in, into the real stuff mr Lugu? Are you supposed to call me Andre, no? Andre. Okay. So how's about it, that? How's it Gaddafi? I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm so I'm the managing director of IKS Cultural Consulting. Mm -hmm. Um and I've been running it now for the last two years yeah. since uh, lockdown. We started it in two thousand and four, but then in two thousand and six I went to work at Samro, so it went to sleep a little bit. And then I left Samro on uh, March 2020, um, you know, when COVID kind of came and they shut down the country, mm. I decided to leave my permanent job. And so IKS does a range of projects. Mm -hmm. Our biggest project is Concerts SA. And Concerts SA, we've supported over 12,000 artists uh, since 2013 in about 11 Sadiq countries, including South Africa, run a mobility fund. Um, do workshops and um, exchange and schools programs, but some of that has been shut down. And then we do research in the creative industries. Yeah. So that's what I'm currently doing. But generally I've been in arts and culture policy strategy for the last 30 years. Mm -hmm. I've worked in local, provincial, local government in the Western Cape, provincial in the Eastern Cape, National Government for the Department of Arts and Culture, National Arts Council, and SAMRO and a range of other organizations. Mm -hmm. As the Chairman of Business and Arts South Africa, as the Chairman of Moshito Music Conference, yeah. Arterial Network, and a couple of other organizations. Yeah. Like, like I said, he, he's, he's done quite a lot of stuff, but I'm more interested in the SAMRO, SAMRO portfolio. Um, Mr. Lugo, I know that uh, you were one of the people that were, oh, thought that this um, movement of playing 90% uh, South African music at uh, the SABC radio stations was uh, nonsensical or was uh, stupid. You, yeah, yeah, I believe that you were one of the people that uh, thought that it was, it was a stupid move. Mm -hmm. w w why? What do you think about it? Do you think that uh, Mr. Saudi Mutwini was wrong to uh, take the initiative? So, friend of mine, Don Laka, he came to my office the one day. And he came, you know Don Laka, I, I know quite a well-known producer, jazz, jazz yeah. artist. He did the quiet jazz vibe. Yeah. <coughs> he came to my office together with... Um, Gabi Leroux. Mm -hmm. Gabi Leroux, he worked with uh, Ngalakata um, sure, sure, sure. Mendoza, yeah. and they were talking about 90%. They're going to push for 90%. Yeah. And I was like, like, why and what and how? And 90% of what? And yeah. how is it going to be implemented? And are there policies in place to do this? And mm. who's actually going to think this through? How does it work on the different radio formats? He said, no, no, it must be 90% local content. So I said, like, okay, that sounds interesting. And about a year before that, we met with, as some executives, we met with uh, Cloudy, Mr. Schlaudi Motswaneng. Yeah. And he, I remember him, 
saying, you Samro people. He had a very funny way of talking. <laughs> he said, you Samro people, you're sending all your money overseas. Yeah, yeah. Why are you sending all your money overseas? So I said, that's very simple, Mr. Mutsuneng. If we, we need to pay the people that own the music, we need to pay the royalties to the people who created the music, those composers and those publishers who own the rights. Mm. And if you and your radio stations continue to play foreign music, we have no choice but to play foreign royalties. So maybe that might have sparked his head a little bit to also yeah. push for the 90%. But the danger of pushing for 90% is that you need to think it through. You can't just wake up overnight to a radio station that's playing 40% South African content and they have a range of good advertising and then you tell them, we want you to pay 90%. Where are they going to get the, the, the content from? Is there enough content to be able to play on that particular format? Mm -hmm. Let's use an extreme example, the Radio Lotus. Yeah, Where are you going to get the 90% mm -hmm. Indian music to be able to change that format? And once you change the format and you put jazz on Radio Lotus, what are you doing to that station? What are you doing to the advertising revenue that allows the radio station to survive? And if you lose the advertising revenue, you're losing your ability to pay royalty income. Yes. So it's not a question of being against 90%. It's a question of a workable business model to allow more content to be able to be played and more revenue to get to artists. Imagine Radio Metro had a very particular format, changed the format drastically, and that drastically meant they reduced their advertising revenue. And during the 90% stage, a lot of advertisers left. They went to the more commercial radio stations. They ditched the SABC. So artists were getting a much bigger percentage of the cake. But if the cake is smaller, you're getting less. So what should have happened was a good discussion on strategy and policy and how you gradually raise the levels. What also didn't happen was good thinking in terms of what already existed. Because uh, your one colleague, I think, likes uh, Motswedding. Was it you that liked Motswedding? Solo likes Motswedding. Solo likes Motswedding. I, I, I like Lesedi. Okay. And you like Lesedi. And Motswedding and Lesedi, I'm sure that they have reached 80 to 90% levels already. But, and, and you know, uh, in and my own space, that's yeah. what I thought. I was like, you know what? Yes, it might be a good move, a move, but you are not considering the listeners. And I, yes. a, a, as a Snoop Check uh, uh, host, I advocate for, 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 for the listeners because they are the ones that drive the radio station. And I was like, okay, so you're going to push this 90% thing, but what about the listeners? Because you're only considering the po producers, con uh, uh, composers, and of musicians, of mm. artists, uh, if that's what you call them. Uh, so, like you say, that they're going to get the 90% of the cake, and then what about the listeners? Because you are giving them what they don't want. So you are forcing me to listen to a certain song. But you can't I don't force just you. listen to, to, to South African music. I want to listen to your know, R. Kelly, and we're going to get to R. Kelly later on, because he's mm. one of, you know... Yes, continue, Mr. Hu. You can't force someone because they switch channels, mm. which means you lost your listener. When you've lost your listener, you've lost your revenue. So you're talking about 90% of a cake that you're reducing to the size of a cookie. So people are getting way less. So it wasn't thought through. It wasn't a proper policy statement. Mm. It wasn't a proper strategy. It didn't look at the nature of broadcasting. It didn't look at the nature of advertising revenue. It didn't look at the nature of royalty income and how that could be managed. And it didn't look at the different formats for radio stations. You know, you don't just wake up one day and decide, yes, yes I'm going to change the world. So it was lopsided. I br it didn't work. <laughs> the so SABC's advertising revenue reduced. <laughs> so what happened, what happened yeah. now? Because um, things have changed. Cloud is no longer there. Um, we are somewhat back to the normal schedule or, or routine. First, don't get me wrong. Yeah. I would love more local content. I would love better local content quotas. Yeah. I would like more South African music being played because I love South African music. I mean, we're sitting here in my man cave. You look around, you'll see African and South African music. 
but it's important that we also sensitize people's tastes. Mm. You can't just decide. It's very dictatorial to force people to listen to something. Because what do they do? Especially the youth, they don't want to be forced. So if the radio stations are not playing what they want, where do they go? They go to the online radio stations. Mm. You lose the listenership, you lose the revenue. So it could have worked very well if it was well thought through, if it was lobbied strategically, and they thought about the business models properly. So yes, we're back to not 90% any longer, mm -hmm. but the smartest thing would be to grow the production capacity, yeah. to grow the good quality of music, and then to look at the different radio formats, the commercial, the community, and to be able to grow it within those spaces. Yeah. But that takes some thought, not just a brain fart by someone like Claudi. Yeah, because uh, not so long ago he was on a podcast and chill with uh, <coughs> McG, and he takes full ownership of whatever that 90% uh, movement thing. Uh, he takes ownership of the 90% statement which wasn't a good policy statement, which wasn't implemented well, which wasn't a great strategy, and it led to the SABC losing revenue, and that's part of the mess they're in. You should also take ownership as to how we got rid of the archives and it got privatized and went to other broadcasters. But he still pats himself at the back for that. He doesn't see anything wrong with it. Although you have put your facts out, he's, he's uh, sort of wearing work clubs. I don't know mm. what they call them in English. You know them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, they're called blinkers. <laughs> blinkers. When I only see one thing. Yes. When I can't see the world. I remember that event. Even um, uh, Mendoza was also there. The late Mendoza. Um, who else? Zoe um, Bully. They were so mm. happy. They celebrated that 90% movement at um, Soweto Stadium. Orlando <laughs> Stadium, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, this was in 2016. Um, so the artists were happy. Because they were going to get, you know... The, the, Which the, artists were happy? A small amount of artists. How many artists have we got in the country? Oh, yeah, a lot. Sam Lerone has got over 100,000 members, 20,000 actors, mem active members. They weren't 20,000 people at that stadium. No, they weren't. They so, even lied to the people. They said so Black even, was going to be there. There was no Black if you, there. If you're satisfying a statement to artists, does that mean you're satisfying a strategy for record companies? or for publishers, or for collection societies who actually runs the business. Mm -hmm. And then if you make these bold statements, have you thought out how to implement them? We're in a country where we celebrate these bold statements. We're still celebrating a better life for all. Mm -hmm. Brah. We're still celebrating <laughs> houses for all, education yeah. for all. Sometimes I wonder if it's education for all. You know, and <laughs> there's, there's, we need to not celebrate the statements we need to think carefully about the implementation we need to think that policy has to be implemented to be real it has to be thought through to be real strategy needs to be worked on and you need professionals to run these entities regrettably mr mutswaneng was a great politician and he had right access to the political frameworks do you think that but as to advisors? build that institution, the SAB is in a worse state than it's ever been. His reign at the SABC has led to our national broadcaster being called Faulty Towers. It doesn't work as well as it should. Are they giving back on their feet? Uh, do we see some improvement? Or are they still in one place? <coughs> I've heard that they're getting back on their feet. I've heard that they've got turnaround plans. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see it being implemented. Yeah. Um, and remember when, when a listener leaves, when it leaves the broadcaster, they don't necessarily come back. In the last couple of years, people left the SABC. Many people don't even watch TV anymore. Mm. They watch their Netflix. Yeah. They watch online. They listen to podcasts like you're doing at the moment. Yes, yes. <laughs> Shut out. <laughs> so the listenership and the growth in podcasts and digital Mm -hmm. It might have been slowed down if the SABC was more effective. When you have a dysfunctional national broadcaster, you increase the escape because you don't have to listen to it any longer. Mm -hmm. You increase the flight of listenership. You increase the flight of revenue. So I don't think it was very strategic. 
Um, I believe that you do listen to radio. Yeah. Do you think that the uh, radio station uh, or radio stations still stick to their format in terms of uh, the music that they play? Because when when I listen to radio and I kind of know what their format is, or a certain radio station I know and I, I don't know what their format is, I feel like whenever there's a song and it's, it's, it's a big song at that moment, they just hoi it in the, in the, in the song's list because it's a big song and it's trending. Forgetting that, no, wait, we need to stick to our format. Here's our format and we, we need to stick to it. But for somebody who's been in the industry for the longest of time, do you, do you think that they still stick to their format? Because every radio station has their own format that they, they, that they need to follow. This, this is the, the music that we play. Look, I'm a channel hopper, so I listen to different radio stations, but I don't listen to them all. Mm. So when you say radio, it depends on the station, which stations stick to format, and then one would have to do a proper assessment. The kind of question you're asking would probably be good as a research topic, yes. where one then analyzes the different radio stations and how they stick to format. Obviously, when there's a chart-topping hit, it goes on different stations and it covers this in form, different formats because it's a popular tune. <coughs> but the kind of radio stations that stick to format would be your Radio Lotus. I mean, know what that format is. Yeah. Uh, radio, um, hey, what's the big Zulu radio station? I've uh, seen the Radio Lotus on my app. Is, is that a... Indian uh, music, yeah. Uh, oh, it's, uh, isn't it online? It's online as well. Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, most radio stations are now online and, and being broadcast. So. Yeah. Um, Ukozi yes. sticks to format, yes. RS here sticks to format. Um, some of the other radio stations, they don't necessarily, and especially the commercial ones, they've been shifting quite a bit. Metro FM, they got rid of DJs and stuff, and they shift yeah. their format quite nicely. But they need to go where the listenership is, they need to go where the revenue is. Kaya FM, what's very sad for someone like me, is that Kaya has... Uh, dropped a lot of its jazz programming, and I like jazz. Yes. And I used to listen to Kaya's yeah. slots with Brenda Sassani, now they in play particular a lot of for the piano. jazz. They play I'm a piano, and yeah. they play uh, house sometimes, yeah, and they play uh, yeah, R&B, sing yeah. you like your, your other dude, Mr. Flying Dude, what's his name? Which one? Uh, I believe I can fly die all. So anyway, so <laughs> the the I think one has to also understand that the radio is a business. Mm. Um, they need to generate revenue, so they need to cater for their listenership. Certainly, um, the radio stations that drop jazz, they lose me, oh, well, and they lose others, but maybe they gain more, because I'm a piano is growing. <laughs> oh, well, it is growing, but now you are straying away from your, 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 your format. And Kaya 959 is one of the radio stations that I thought of, oh, uh, that I did my research on, I was like, you know what? Their format says jazz, and now they are playing a lot of Ama Piano. I mean, like. I'm so, so, I'm very disappointed. Yeah. But I'm more disappointed with a national broadcaster. Mm. Because with a national broadcaster, what's your mandate? You need to educate the public. Yes. You need to cultivate tastes. <coughs> and I wish they would focus more on introducing people to new music and interesting music and growing the listenership across the spectrum mm. in their different channels. So I don't think it's a question of having to force the 90%, but it's a question of educating the public and getting into that mandate. And when you say educating the public, I obviously don't mean propaganda. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've always wondered about this. Um, how does this process work where a song gets played and then the owner of the song has to go claim from somewhere? Um, I just want us to teach the youngsters out there that are listening or watching us. Um, how does it work? How do you register at SAMRO? Uh, most imp you don't pay to register at SAMRO, and you pay to register your music. So it's free to register your music at SAMRO. Yeah. One of the first things any artist should do is when they've created a track, when they've created a song, written the lyrics, register the music at SAMRO. That you can do online through the SAMRO portal. Mm -hmm. And it's free, and it allows you to protect your work. Often a lot of the work produced doesn't make a lot of money, but it's better to protect it before it even becomes a commercial success. Because yeah. often what happens is that the, the artists are in studio, they don't agree on the ownership, 
and then they don't agree on the registration yeah. and then the song becomes a hit and suddenly someone registers it and then it's like oh my goodness whose percentage now that it's making money yeah so sort it out beforehand register your your compositions register whatever kind of percentage splits you have in the music before it becomes a commercial success and then monitor that you do that regularly with each and every song you've created with each and every track you've created yeah. and do it before you've uploaded it because sometimes the guy said no I'll, I'll register it later I'll re- i'm at the bridal one day with this one guy and he says to me you know my song is on the radio and you you people aren't paying me yeah and i say okay have you registered it he says no not yet yeah. i said bra do you expect samro to smell who you are <laughs> like 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 really yeah <laughs> and i'm going to say something a little bit controversial mm. i said to him the same practice you have with intimate relations with a woman mm. you protect yourself first yeah. before you do the intimate relations okay do the same thing with your music yeah. protect it mm. register it either with samro make sure you registered with capasso If you're going to be performing on other people's tracks, make sure that you registered um, for needle time with Sampra. Make sure that you've dotted the I's and crossed the T's so that your works are protected. Otherwise, you come to us when it's being exploited. But then who counts uh, how many times a song has been played on a radio? <coughs> Whose job is that? The radio station would report to Sampra. Okay. They'd report the cue sheets. A lot of that is done electronically nowadays. Oh. Of course with the bigger radio stations is electronically and they're always refining their systems Samra's busy refining their systems <coughs> as well as the other record companies uh, I'm not re- collection societies are refining their systems yeah. however sometimes the local community radio stations they don't report so well so sometimes you have them paying the license fee but not giving the the, yeah, the usage data Okay. So the li- the, 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 the the royalties comes from the license fee. So they pay the license fee, but they didn't give the usage data. Or well, the usage data is inaccurate. So it really is important for you as an artist to know where your music is being performed. To know your kind of music and then to look at your royalty statements. Like the discussion we were having earlier Don't just look at it and say, "Ah, here's my check." But ah, look at these It's zeros nice. over oh, here. Yeah. It's nice. Look where does your check come from? If you're doing some nice gom or ama piano, mm. is there someone in Belgium playing it? Know that you've got a market there, and then know that that's how you're going to grow your market there. If your royalties go down, you're like, "Ah, bra, these people are conning me." Mm. Look at your statement. Understand where your usage is happening. The other discussion we have is also that there's the royalty income that you get from Samra, but sometimes the bigger money you can make is in terms of synchronization rights. Yeah. When uh, Quester's song is used on some kind of an advert mm-hmm. somewhere, and those can also generate very nice income. So understand what deals you're going to get into, how you're going to get into those deals. Are you going to sign with a publisher to administer or to be your publisher? Sometimes for artists they sign rather to just do an admin deal so they retain a bigger percentage of their work. I don't know. Okay, and so sometimes so. they're self-published. So do some reading. I've got some books here about the music industry. Yeah, I was telling these guys that you read a lot. This is just I'm not he so for decoration. <laughs> you read. All of it is available online. You know, and I think that artists, the first thing that artists need to learn to do is read their contracts before they sign it. <laughs> But sometimes they're overexcited and it's the same. Hey, you know, when you're overexcited, you make the wrong decisions. Yeah. And you're making a decision about your, your future, future. Yeah. about your life, about your work. Because most artists won't be in a job ever. But their work generates an income. Mm. And for 50 years after an artist is dead, that work can generate an income so why don't you take your legacy seriously and take your work seriously not just the artistic output but the revenue and the different revenue streams 
before you put your music somewhere else where it can go internationally and a dude in Japan or Germany or Brazil can use it on a soap opera, protect it, yeah. register it. Let's talk about mixtapes. <clears throat> um, in a situation where a presenter plays a certain song mm. and then later on the same show, the very same song gets played on a mixtape. Does that count? Does that mean that the same song has been played twice in the same show? Um, does that also count in terms of the sample? Like how many times a song has been played? Do mixtapes also count? Yes, they count. When it comes to mixtape, uh, by the way, you know I left Samra two and a half years ago, no? Oh, yeah? But anyway, so I'm on my own now. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> but anyway, when it, how is the broadcaster going to report on the mixtape? They need to report on the different work, works. Okay. And hopefully they report accurately. And if they've reported accurately, the accurate payment will take place. If they reported inaccurately, and there's been many cases where they report inaccurately, it means an inaccurate payment takes place because there's inaccurate data. The accuracy of data is very important. However, it works really nicely when it's electronic because that, that digital footprint can then be calculated, put into the system, and automatic, automatically the report is generated and it produces an income. So hopefully most of the, the radio stations now have shifted and moved towards electronic reporting, mm. um, proper uh, uh, digital footprints, so that the data comes in an electronic format. So then the, the codes embedded in the music will be able to ensure that the, the reporting takes place. Because once you have humans involved and they're busy sitting and yeah. typing and uh, hoying the cue sheets, ah, brah, that's where the problems happen. And that goes back to registering your music and having the the right codes when you, whether it's your ISRC codes or whatever kind of codes and stuff, make sure it's properly registered so it can be tracked and traced. Yeah. And that the ownership can be tracked and traced. And make sure that the splits are done beforehand. Yeah. Well, well, I thought it was a violation of the radio rules because you can be playing the same song more than once. I don't know, bra. Uh, uh, radio, what radio rules are we talking about? You can play the same song in the same, in the same show, like more than once, unless if it's a, unless if a show is on a high rotation. Which radio rule exactly? All, is all, that? all, all uh, for all radio stations. Like you cannot play the same song more than once. You can only play the same song once in a show. But Gaddafi, which rules? Where, where's those rules written? The radio rules. Uh, there are not such radio rules. Sorry, bro. So you think I'm so lying? So the man. guy that uh, <laughs> 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 the guy that's compiling and the people that, uh, for the different radio stations they make those rules up as they go along. Unless you can quote those rules to me. No, no, no. Mr. Maybe man. I'm wrong. I, I, I don't. Know. That's how much can you and educate that's what we were taught. That's what we were are. taught in, in, in uh, at school. That's what we were taught. I, I studied radio. She studied radio. It's also, it's also here. She cannot test that to that. Those rules are that you can't play the same song over and over. And on then the they still show. do it. On the same show. And then they still do it. They still do it. And then how, what, we're then about what it. are you going to do? In Hence order? I was saying, so, wait quickly, wait quickly. So there's a rule, eh? yes. so There's a rule that you can't play the same song over and over. On the same show. On the same show. Yes. So this uh, 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 DJ, let's say DJ Stale, because we're not going to talk about the other DJ, yeah. plays the same song over and over on the radio. So who's going to do something about it? The station manager. Are you sure he's going to do something about it? Well, they have to. They have how to. will if they, they know? don't do anything about it, that's why Snoop Check is here. You so know, you've been checking. We are here to tackle all of that. I listen to this so-called uh, big radio presenters. I'm tackling it. People need to know about this. We're talking about it. No, but we're talking about it. But like, you need to then say which song, which radio station have you reported? How many times have you reported them? Me? Yeah. Are they going to do anything about it? No, no. You told I'm, me I'm, that I'm, you're doing I'm, something about it. Yeah, with this platform, Snoop Check, I'm doing something about it. But what are you we, doing? We're talking about it. We are educating people. We're educating uh, uh, upcoming but radio presenters that you must know that this I'm is wrong. Gaddafi. <laughs> which radio station, mm. which DJ, 
How many times have you reported it? Well, so far I haven't went like straight to the radio stations ah, and complained. Kura? But I, I, I do tell them on Twitter. No, what kind of activism is that? But I do tell them on Twitter. You need they, to be specific. I, I, I got blocked by Skumba Shope not so long ago for, for, for telling him that you, you cannot eat while you are on air. It's wrong. I always tell these guys and they block me on Twitter. Gah. So <laughs> that's what I was getting to. Yes. We they need... blocked me on Twitter. I'm not scared of these guys. I tell them. Um, I'm still on the foundation phase. As soon as yeah. this platform grows, um, and then more people get to watch this, they and then they, they will learn and they will know what's right and or what's wrong. Uh, and I wasn't playing with you a little bit earlier. Mm. I was talking about activism and youth activism. Yeah, we can't just say certain things are wrong and not do something about it. No, well, I, I, I love what Bonang did with the minister. She went on the old flag thing. You know, oh, we need some seats. more. But we need they're some more. Like me. We need some more activism, not just tweeting. We need some real activism too. The mm. next time you say to me, there's this rule and there's this practice that's incorrect, it would be nice for you to produce a letter mm. that says, according to this set of rules, it's clause 5.2a of the set of radio regulations mm. and the. Uh, Offense happened on uh, this particular radio station by this DJ at this time because yeah. then you're talking specifics. Well, uh, well, uh, well, I'm still learning and I thank you for that. So, Gaddafi, mm. it's great that you have this platform, mm. but how are we going to get the youth like you guys mm. to be more constructively active in lobbying and advocating for change in the country? Because I'm now getting older. Freddy and Beth is getting older, and we've been fighting for a long time. So beyond the tweeting and the retweeting on social media and moaning, how are we going to get the radio stations to change, the arts and culture departments to change? How are you guys going to help us with lobbying and advocacy? Yeah, now you, we must dodge bullets now. These people threaten us. Eh? Yeah. So do you think we weren't threatened in our day? Do you think we weren't shot at in our day? Do you think we, we, we don't struggle when it comes to funding stuff? But does that mean you shy away from the confrontation? But how did you survive it? You, you're saying that you, you guys have been fighting, getting threatened. There was a time when I was fighting. I got fired from the National Arts Council. I fought the Minister of Arts and Culture. Um, and uh, I lost my income for a while. I got invited to policy discussions where I would sit in a meeting and the seats next to me was unoccupied and all the other seats were occupied in these forums. Mm. So I got ostracized and I had to rebuild a career after having challenged the political powers that be. Now, what kind of sacrifices are you guys going to make mm. to be able to lobby for the change that we need beyond social media? Mm. Tell me. Snoop Tech 108. <laughs> Snoop Tech 101. We're coming for them, man. You're coming for them. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, no, I hear you, Mr. Gwen. I, I will appreciate it. Um, at least you got my back, don't you? Yes. He's got my back. <laughs> I got your back and your front. Yes. But we need to kind of make things happen now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, by the way, this is Snoop Tech. Um, this is where we talk about the mistakes that you do behind the scenes and in front. I'm listening. Uh, the mistakes that you do on air, uh, the stupid decisions that you guys make, um, we're coming for you. Uh, Mr. Ru, now we are coming to the interesting part. This one is very interesting <coughs> of them all. Uh, I'm sure you know Briggs. Um, he's a Guaido artist uh, mm -hmm. and he was sentenced to 15 years in jail for raping a teenage, uh, yeah. a, a teenage girl. Um, you do know Kelly Kumarwet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, she's a South African musician and she was uh, allegedly behind the late um, soccer star Senzo Meiwa's murder. And I'm going somewhere with this. Um, Jubjub was in prison for killing school children. 
Um, he was also accused uh, by several women for or of sexual assault. Another musician that had allegations that were leveled against um, was um, Java. Oh. He allegedly uh, abused the Lady Zama. Um, DJ Fresh and Ifoni got sacked by Prime Media or 947 uh, because there were allegations that were leveled against them. Busi Radebe's manager saw a Dr. Rebecca Malope at, at, at uh, her concert in, 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 in Rustenburg. I was there. Um, it was all over the papers online. Some, some audience or her followers saw on Twitter that they're going to cancel her. They're no longer going to go to her events. Uh, meaning they're gonna boycott her, 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 her concert or her, or her music. Boycott who? Busira Debe. Busira, okay. Yes. <clears throat> All these artists that I have mentioned and, and others that I didn't mention because there's a lot, including Ari Kelly. I did mention in, in the beginning of the show that uh, I'm gonna touch on Ari Kelly as well. Um, he's in jail, right? Mm -hmm. Now, because he, he was abusing women. Um, so I'm not even going to go abroad because there's a lot of them. So now, all of these musicians and artists and producers that I've mentioned, if the South African radio stations were to boycott their music, what would happen to the radio industry? How is that going to affect the radio industry? If we were going to take action and say, as the radio industry, we say, we're not going to play your music anymore, because of the things that they do behind closed doors, the things that they do in the dark, how do you think that is gonna affect the radio industry? Because here, you just ask me now, how, how, how are we fighting this industry? How are we tackling these things? Um, we can't just be on, on, on the social media, we're we gonna boycott your music, we, we're, not, we're never gonna come to your concert. And at the end of the day, the very same people end up going to the, 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 the concert or uh, the, their shows. Buelin and that. The questions you're asking can be either quite simple or quite complex. Mm. Some of the people that you spoke about were found guilty in a court of law. Mm -hmm. And they, they, therefore they end up serving time. Yes. Some of the people you spoke about, they are allegations mm -hmm. and accusations mm. and they've not found guilty in the court of law. Yeah. How do we deal with those? Some of the situations you've mentioned is disputes between artists mm. and censorship by the public. Yes. So what do we want to happen? Prime to, Media did something about it. They, they, to, they, they, did something about who and... DJ Fresh and Infonic, they got sick <coughs> over allegations. Exactly. Now that becomes very problematic. Because imagine, and I don't know where that case is now. Mm, mm. Let's say that particular case goes to court. Mm. And let's say um, the two individuals you speak about are declared innocent. Mm. What are the reparations for those two individuals, that last part of their livelihood? Yeah. And I'm not saying that abuse isn't rife in the music industry. And I'm not saying the casting couch isn't rife, isn't rife in form or that women get exploited, or that gender-based violence is a really major issue in the country. That's not what I'm saying. Mm. But what I am saying is that it's really dangerous when we practice cancel culture. Because once you've canceled, how do you uncancel? Yeah. Yeah? Mm. When you've canceled a big-named artist mm. for having assaulted um, on social media, and you've seen the videos, Mm. That they've assaulted someone, and you don't know what was the precursor to that assault. Mm. And you don't know what parts of the story you're really getting. But you then become judge and jury. Yeah. The danger of social media is that things snowball so quickly. And then we start to cancel people and get them out. Mm. Yes, we need to do something about gender-based violence. Yes, we need to do something about the inequity of women within the music industry, within the entertainment industry, and with the arts. We need to do something about the vulnerability of our mothers, our daughters, and our children. 
but we need to be careful as to how we do it. Mm. Otherwise, we're going to end up, the social media has become the place where we burn women at the stake. You remember in the Dark Ages, they used to burn women. Someone can call them a, 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 a witch. It wasn't only in the Dark Ages. It still happens in some of our provinces mm. where someone calls someone else a witch and they get burnt. Now people get burnt on social media. It's very, very dangerous. There needs to be some kind of responsibility there. There needs to be some kind of legitimacy to those claims mm. before we act on them, before we choose a side. Because sometimes you, you hear sometimes that someone that is accused of something and they go to court, they get declared innocent. What's the backtrack? Does social media then go, does everyone delete all those tweets? Or do they remain there? Mm. Does the mud that was flung, that stuck at that point in time, does it remain or does it get erased? So there's a, there's a big danger there, and especially amongst the youth, when it comes to how we cancel people, mm. how we deal with people, how we want sanction, how we push for sanction, and sometimes with corporates, how we engage in the sanction. And that is, it's a sense of vigilantism. Mm. Is it true that artists, well, some of them were paying Metro <coughs> FM and other radio stations for their music to get played on a Payola. Which artist? Which radio station? Metro. Which artist paid? No, no, no. Remember How much did they pay? Now? Yes, it's your channel, bro. <laughs> I thought we were talking about activism here. You see, it's, 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 all, it's all good and well to mm. throw an allegation. Yeah. So are you saying to me, Gaddafi, that saying, Rebecca Malofe, Malope paid, who did she pay? Which, which, yes. which DJ? For what? At what slot? That's what I'm and saying. how much Is it was true? it? true? Because I don't want to touch on or step in the things that I'm not sure of. It's, you see... That's but exactly what you shouldn't be doing. Is payola an issue in the music industry? Yes. Does payola still happen? From what I've heard, yes. Do I have a particular incident as to when and how it happened? No. If you're saying a particular artist's name, and the reason I'm mentioning Rebecca Malopa's name, because I don't think that's something she would ever do, mm. <laughs> beyond the reproach in that sense. Yeah. But if you're saying to me that this happened, then say it with evidence and proof. Not just a wild statement, my brother. Mm. Then you're going back to the kind of cancel culture thing. Mm. Where we hang people without proof. Where we throw a tie around someone's neck and we put some petal over it because someone else said that's who they are. Where we don't play someone's music because other people have made some allegations. Mm. So, well, I'm get just to, keeping let's my get ears to specific. But you need to clean your ears also sometimes, my brother. And you need to get the evidence sometimes, my brother. You need to tell me which radio station, who was it, which DJ, and did you report it? Huh? If you're going to clean the sector, you're, gonna, you're not going to clean it on the basis of wild accusations mm. and cancel culture. Because once you've done that, you destroy certain things. There must be like a concrete evidence. There's two children that gets Lego for Christmas mm. under the Christmas tree. They open the box, and the one doesn't know what to do with the Lego pieces. The other one, he builds something very nice. And the one who can't build something, he breaks that thing to pieces. And the other one, is he going to rebuild his Lego again and watch the other one break it to pieces? Mm. We need to consider who are we within society. What are we breaking down? What are we building? And how do we rebuild institutions? Don't just destroy careers, lives, livelihoods, reputations for the purposes of enjoying the negativity of, yeah, let's do this thing. Mm. So there's a social conscience that needs to change. With people like you, let's not throw wild accusations. Mm. Let's do specifics. If there's a criminal thing, large charges. If there's a support group needed, refer someone. If there's an institution doing something wrong, point it out. But get your facts straight, bra, please. Mm -hmm. um, simple question. <coughs> Whose job is it to make sure that the, 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 the songs that are being played on radio are clean? 
So there are no swear words. They don't promote uh, 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 profanity. I, I'm just asking for a friend. Actually, I don't know. I think the, there's the BCCSA, the Broadcasting yes. Compliance Commission yes, of yes. South Africa. Yes. And then there's some rules through ICASA mm -hmm. in terms of the license agreements. In film, there's the Film and Publications Board. So there's different entities <laughs> that practices the sanction. But sometimes, you know, you start to think that that sanctions like censorship. So uh, maybe yeah. you need some more flexibility because the access that kids have to the Internet nowadays, they can listen to any amount of profanity that they want. Yeah. I don't think we're that much of a Christian state anymore. Um, Why, is there some words that offend you that you want to remove from radio stations? Well, like I said, I was asking for a friend. Um, there's a friend of mine. He does... He's a producer, he's a hip hop uh, 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 artist. Uh, we, we were talking this week and he wanted to submit some of his music to some of the radio stations. But his, his music has got swear words and I listened to some of them like he does some F words that's so. But now he doesn't know where to start. And mm. I was like, no man, since you are the producer, clean it out and then submit it to the radio stations because the uh, regulations there, uh, if the music is too much for the kids. Look, even in the age of CDs, there was parental advisory. <laughs> you can do songs, do your own music with parental advisory. But if you're going to want it to be played on a station that caters for a particular audience, then you should clean it up because you're going to cater for that particular audience. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's up to him. Maybe his niche is the underground niche. And people, I don't think Eminem cares about the words that he uses. Um, I don't think uh, many artists out there they they care about the self sanction. Yeah. So that's that's an, again something about his own business model yeah. that he needs to think about what he wants to do with it. He, yeah. So don't censor yourself unless you're looking at some commercial viability there. Mm. Yeah. And think about which platforms you want to put it on. Um, I mean, have you heard the group The Antwoord? Yes, yes, they use a lot of profane things um, in their music, and that's fine. Yeah. Not that I would listen to it, by the way, and not that I want my daughter listening to it. But guess what? She goes on to YouTube, and she goes on to other sites. 12, 13-year-olds listen to everything nowadays. I don't think the self-censorship thing, the censorship thing doesn't work so well nowadays with the freedom and the democratization of the internet. Yes. I don't so, think like, it really works. So, yeah, yeah. And if it's a commercial thing that you're on, if it's a particular radio station and the format doesn't require that, then obviously you need to change your music. Yeah. Otherwise, you're putting your music where it's, they're going to say no obvious. Yeah. It's like going into your mother's house and swearing at someone. You're you not going to get know. away with it, are you? <laughs> but you go into your buddy's house and you use a different kind of language. Yes. It's the same like radio stations, bro. Um, I, I want to close it off now. Um, since you do listen to radio and you've been listening to radio, what was the stupidest thing you've picked up from uh, somebody in the radio industry? The stupidest thing to date was Sladi Matsuning's 90% for me. <laughs> Why? Because if what he had said and managed was how we grow local content across the different platforms of radio, television, mm -hmm. commercial, non-commercial, he wouldn't have destroyed parts of the biggest broadcaster in the country. He wouldn't have destroyed advertising revenue. He wouldn't have destroyed some of the consumption. Mm. So it isn't a thing that a DJ has done or one particular radio station's done. What we need is strategic thinking, strategic implementation so that we can grow our sector. To me, one of the weirdest things is that the biggest cultural institution is actually the SABC. But it's not under the Department of Arts and Culture. Mm. It's under the Department of Communications. We need to have conscious, thoughtful decision-making in positions of power so that we can grow our cultural footprint, so that we can produce good stuff, good music that can be 
taken up here and internationally. Mm. So that was one of the stupidest things. And the reverse of that is that one of the best things that needs to happen is the fixing of the national broadcaster. Mm. Well, that's it, Mr. Rumo. Thank you so much for your time. Pleasure. I will appreciate it. Ka. Ka. My name is Gaddafi. You are getting too comfortable, Daso. Snoop check is his. You are doing the total opposite. You are not doing what you are supposed to do. You are not doing what you were taught at school or wherever. I'm coming for you. My name is Dumisani Tanetan. Gaddafi. Let's go free state. 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 Let's go free state.